Hello everyone. Today we're taking a look at the free-to-play title by Sony called Planet Side 2. Now, to sum up, it's a massive multiplayer online shooter. And it's not really just a shooter because it's a war game. So you've got everything here from infantry, filling uh, lots of different roles, for instance, light assault, heavy assault, medics, engineers, and uh, infiltrators, uh, all the way up to tanks, aircraft, um, buggies, you name it, it's all here basically. Um, this game is absolutely massive and it's been designed not to be like your normal first person shooter where you may only have you know 30 odd players in a level um, in this game you have thousands of players all simultaneously fighting across one of the largest maps you have ever seen and then to top it all off there are three different maps representing three warring factions effectively and the idea is it's a, a turf war really the three factions are fighting over this over these massive worlds and looking to take items of territory. In this case, right now, we're trying to assault uh, one of the towers, which happens to have um, vehicle pads and uh, aircraft pads, uh, as well as being able to spawn infantry. And at the moment, we're currently trying to assault it. Now, you can see here, there's loads of people on screen. There's an enemy tank up there, which I'm about to launch some missiles at. If I can get a lock on. No. Um, but the idea is to simulate a war in the far-flung future. So all of the weaponry, um, we're currently here with the TR um, faction, uh, all of the weaponry has a very futuristic kind of feel to it. Whilst the TR are very much projectile um, based, so everything is bullets basically and missiles, um, one of the other factions has lasers for instance. And you can see there are an aircraft flying overhead. And you know, as I'm looking around here, you can see there are so many players, and this is only a small fraction of the number that you could uh, have a, on screen at any one time. But uh, there's my repeater rocket. Whoa, and he got me. So quickly respawned. Respawn timers last, you know, 10 seconds or so, and then you can get straight back into the action, dropping an ammo pack. I'm currently running as an engineer here, so I can also drop these mana turrets as well, which are uh, absolutely phenomenal for just holding down an infantry assault coming towards you, but does tend to make you a bit of a target for tanks and uh, anything with a missile. But you can see here I'm able just to lay down a, a little bit of covering fire, give my guys an opportunity just before I get killed, and then I'm moving on again. So now the assault has just moved around. We're actually attacking from three points around this um, building. And so switched over to the, infantry, uh, the infiltrator now and just try and uh, deal with some of this infantry currently holed up on the top of the tower. Uh, main reason for doing that is we can't really assault the tower until we can get their covering fire reduced a little bit and then our guys can push forward. Um, the whole way the game works, and it's been in a very, very long uh, development cycle um, through an alpha, and now currently I think in beta, so not even officially released yet, although anyone can now jump in and play. Um, it, they have done an awful lot of work here to really balance up and polish the game, and they're making changes and additions constantly to how the game actually works. Um, really, really fantastically well made. Um, the, the general scale of the game is just something that is breathtaking the first few times you jump in. And there will be real moments. I've been playing now for maybe, I think, about eight, nine months. And there are real moments in this game where you kind of just end up dumbstruck, I think, really, is the, the word for it. I mean, you can see here how many players we have just in this one small little area. Um, and we're, we're basically pinned down at the moment. And here's the enemy starting to swarm towards us. Um, it really is a game that at times will just leave you breathless, uh, especially when, you know, a high explosive round goes off behind you. Um, but just phenomenally well made game. Um, in a second, we'll be switching over to some of the uh, vehicles so you can have a look and see how those operate. And here we go, moving now to my tank. Um, all the vehicles just feel meaty in this game. None of them are uh, particularly, uh, you know, weak. And you can upgrade everything. That's one of the key things with this game. Um, everything is available as an unlock, or if you want to hand over money, because it is a free-to-play game, you can unlock weaponry earlier, but you still have the progression there. It's not play to uh, pay to win. So effectively, if you're willing to put the time in, you can unlock any gun in the game. The area where the kind of... Um, microtransactions and the in-app purchases come in is really for customization. So do you want to make your tank look cooler? Do you want to have these uh, hood ornaments that you can just see here, this skull that's just on the front? Uh, and obviously the camos as well. And those add nothing really to how well you're going to be able to play the game, 
but it just gives you something to differentiate yourself from all of the other grey tanks, basically. Um, and that, for me, I think works really nicely. I spent a little bit of money um, just making you know, my gear look really cool, because I think it just adds something a little bit extra, really, whilst you're playing. Um, you know, people tend to get out of your way when a really nice-looking tank rolls up. Um, but at the same time, then you see a little bit more of a target for the, uh, for the other side, because, you know, you stand out a little bit more. Um, but everything is well balanced. At no point in this game does it ever feel like you're going to get absolutely trashed by one person using one particular type of loadout. Uh, everything seems to have a counter because there is just such a wide variety going on here. So if somebody's uh, sat there with a rocket launcher, fly up to them with um, a um, mosquito, you know, bomb them from the air. Whatever it takes, basically, everything has a counter if you're willing to use your brain. Um, and it just makes for a very, very fun experience. The, the likes of which we've not really had in a, a first-person shooter before. But like I say, that this game kind of transcends first-person shooters and kind of ends up more of this massive multiplayer war game. Um, it's something just a little bit more than just Call of Duty or just Battlefield. Um, realistically, this is where Call of Duty and Battlefield will have to go to over the next few years. Uh, otherwise, they're going to look decidedly out of date. Um, Sony have done a phenomenal job with Planet Side 2, uh, creating possibly the best first-person shooter that's ever been made, certainly the most dynamic war game that's ever been created. Um, and to have it in these huge uh, open worlds with all of the unlocks, vehicles and gear available, plus the way that they're actually working with the community of gamers to improve their game, makes this a title that it's a no-brainer. You have to check it out. The system requirements are a little bit high. If you want to be able to play it on full details at 60 frames a second like we're seeing here, then you're going to have to, uh, you know, have a fairly beefy PC. But all in all, it's well worth it. This was played on a GTX 580.